Welcome back. It's Thursday, June 15th, and the MLB, our three favorite picks are on the way. It's Austin joined by Logan. Loose recap yesterday, a solid three in one day, a massive bounce back day that we desperately needed. And boy, was it sweaty, Logan. Verlander, five plus Ks, was not sweaty. He got that easily done. Mets money line, they went in the 10th. Nationals plus one and a half. No sweat bet, man. <laughs> I had a clutch up in the top of the ninth. I ended up almost getting close to winning that game. Lost on a walk-off. Then we had the Tigers plus two and a half and the over two and a half first five. Looking like a sweat-free winner. And then they gave up seven unanswered. But hey, we'll take it. Our only loss was the Nerfie. We got ruined by a solo bomb by Fernando Tatis. Naturally, we considered about three Nerfies yesterday. I'd let you know the other two hit. But hopefully we'll dial back in Nerfie Nation. I know it hasn't been the best year for the Nerfies, but... Either way, they're a lot of fun, and hopefully we can get back into a winning streak. Now, before we dive into our favorite picks, we've got to talk about people in Ontario. If you do live there, listen up, points bet. We've talked about it in your area, and I believe word on the street is that their offer is even better this time. So check it out, the top link in the description. But, Logan, it is a day for a good bounce back day. Let's have another good winning day. What you got for the people today? Yeah, let's string together some wins for sure. Now, I didn't like any sides in this one, and neither did you. So we're we're both on totals today, but I do like our picks. I think I think we can get it done. I'm going to the scene of the crime of the ner the Nerfy crime yesterday. I'm going to the Guardians versus Padres game, and I'm taking the first five over four runs in this one minus 120 odds on, on bet 365 is currently your best value now i do like it at four and a half as well because that's probably what everyone's going to wake up and see on on most books but if i can line chop and get at four I'm, of course i'm going to do it there but i would avoid playing it on DraftKings, which has a, a four and a half at minus 125 like just wait till the odds shift on that one because I, I don't like laying juice on the extra half because you get the poten push potential at four but I still think there's a really good shot that this one does have at least five runs through five innings, which is what we would need to cash this bet. And and if you look at if you look at how the, the game flows kind of went on in this series so far, you had game one, there were eight runs in the first five innings. Game two, there were only two runs in the first five innings. Pendulum swings, maybe maybe get some runs today. I think today with the two starting pitchers, though, it will look a little bit more like game one. You got Ryan Weathers starting for the Padres today 4.93 ERA and a 1.49 whip I mean that's a high whip that's a that's an ERA of like um, uh, five pretty much and Weathers doesn't strike out many batters ninth percentile in K percentage sixth percentile in chase rate so look he's already he's facing a, a Cleveland team that's like second best in strikeouts already they're not going to they're not going to swing at bad pitches and he doesn't really get them to strike out anyway so it's a team that already is putting the ball in play and if you look at I've, I pulled each pitchers like pitch mix right Weathers uses his fastball over 50 percent of the time I looked at most of the Cleveland hitters that I think should be in the lineup today you know the Quan, the the Ramirez most of the hitters are hitting 250 or better against the that particular pitch I think Ryan Weathers today might struggle. Now, while the Guardians haven't been great against lefties this year, that's going to be your counterpoint. Logan, 25th in batting average. They've been terrible. I still think Weathers makes enough mistakes. It's just one of those things where if you've watched the, this type of pitcher and him specifically, I just think he's going to miss locations on the fastball if he puts a fastball right down the middle and they're already hunting fastball. That's how you get a, a nice little extra base hit in there. And I think the Guardians will be able to do that against him today. Now, who's starting for the Guardians? It's going to be Logan Allen. 3.31 ERA and a 1.39 whip. I liked backing Logan Allen la in the last time I did, but today I gotta fade him because I just see some danger signs, right? First, first of all, Logan Allen uses fastball 45% of the time. Most of the Padres hitters have decent splits against him and his secondary off-speed pitches as well. I considered like if I was betting a total base prop, which I'm not, but I I don't bet those. But if you look at you know like a Juan Soto and Tatis, those those two have decent splits versus Logan Allen's pitch mix. So it's just something I noticed. I'm like, if they can do damage at the top of the order, I think Logan Allen might be in a little bit of trouble. He's he's always one of those pitchers that it seems like he's always got runners on first and second with, one, with zero or one outs. And he sometimes manages to wiggle his way out of it. I don't know about that today, right? As a pitcher that uses fastball often, being 17th percentile in fastball velocity and 29th percentile in fastball spin, is a potential danger sign to me, right? Those those metrics are not as important as the others, but they still are one of those things that I'm like, hey man, if, if your fastball isn't as as you know fast as as the others pitchers and the velocity isn't that high, could this hitter see it a little bit better? I think so. And if you look at Allen's expected ERA, it's a 4.35. That's obviously higher than his actual ERA and his expected slugging. 34th percentile and expected batting average 27th percentile. I'm just saying, I think he's he's one of those young pitchers that unfortunately is do a little bit of regression. And San Diego's 17th in batting average versus lefties ball isn't great on the season, 
they were getting better of late. 276 against lefties in their last three games. I think this Padres lineup can do some damage against Logan Allen. They're a tough lineup to pitch through. While they've underachieved most of this year, I still think that they have the bats to be able to do this one. I think four, you know, asking for four runs for a push isn't asking all that much. Asking for five for the win is definitely manageable with these two pitchers. So I'm going to go ahead and take the first five over in this one. But Austin, you got another total pick for us. What are you going with? Yeah, so I'm going to go to a different game. It is a game that we considered making a, a actual game pick on, but I'd rather take this pick. And I'm going to Tigers and Twins, and I'm taking the under at 8. It's just minus 120 on DraftKings. It was at 8 on most books. I would not be surprised if this drops to 7.5 by first pitch. If it does happen to drop there, probably wouldn't play a full unit at 7.5. Probably drop it to either half or maybe 0.75 units, depending on how comfortable you are there. But I like it either way. Obviously, we're going to need it kind of to go under 7.5 to cash this bet, but we do have the eight push potential which could happen if it's like a five three final score kind of thing but let's talk about why we're in this one and yesterday the tigers thank you guys we i, I needed it badly after going up four zero giving up seven unanswered needing a run in the bottom of the fifth you got it done and while i i can't, i didn't expect you guys to get done you did and they were involved in two very high scoring games 10 to 7 and 6 to 5 yesterday in their double header i just don't think the runs are coming here today and we've talked about this offense very inconsistent. So I love fading a Tigers offense, especially coming after their six game home set stretch going on the road. And let's talk about who they're going to face for the first majority of the game. It's going to be Sonny Gray. He's going to start for the Twins. And he's been pretty good. 2.25 ERA, 1.25 whip. He's been even better at home with a 1.71 ERA and 1.05 whip. And he's only allowing a 226 batting average this season. And only allowed one home run this season. We saw yesterday the Tigers ruined a lot of damage against Spencer Strider, especially in my game, via the home run ball. But Sonny Gray's been keeping the ball in the ballpark, and that's what you want to see. If for Tigers offense, that sometimes they just walk up swinging for the fences, I'd rather them have to string together two, three, four hits to put up some runs on Gray instead of, you know, one home run or maybe a two, two three run home run because those will be back breaking when you're taking an under at eight. But like we've talked about, this is a Tigers offense. You can't really trust the whole line. Well, I expect some great, great to see some regression as the season goes on. I like him against this lineup. I mean, they're coming off a six game home stretch and we've already talked about it. this is a Tigers offense. They were on six games home. Their previous six away games only scored eight runs combined. This was a team putting up zero, one, maybe three runs on a good day. So I like fading them on the road. Tigers, 81 plate appearances versus Gray, 27.2K percentage, a .188 expected batting average, and it's the .264 expected slugging. Look, Gray has kind of had their number. He pitched twice against Detroit last year. Six innings pitched, one earned run allowed, and seven innings pitched, zero earned runs. If we can get Gray to come out here and pitch pretty well, which the books are expecting him to, you can look at a strikeout prop, six and a, sitting at six and a half strikeout or strikeouts, and the juice is on the over. I think it was like minus 125. Gray's under six and a half Ks and a five straight starts. So it's pretty clear they expect him to pitch pretty well. I think he can hold down this Tigers offense. But we need also a decent outing out of the other guy who's going to be Matthew Boyd. Now, he's going to start for the Tigers. If you look at his numbers, 5.558 or 5.5 ERA and a 1.35 whip. His expected ERA is 4.20, so some regression is going to come his way. And for whatever reason, his home road splits are wonky from what you would expect from normal pitchers. But you look at him. At home, 8.46 ERA and a 1.84 whip. On the road where he finds himself today, 2.93 ERA and a 0.91 whip. Now, I doubt if you were to flash, just go to the future about four months from now, that his splits are exactly like that. But hey, if they are, I, I'm down for it because we need a decent outing out of him. And I like his splits against his Twins offense, which has really struggled against the uh, against the lefties, which that Boyd is a lefty. And this is also, you know, Boyd obviously been good on the road. The Twins, I haven't seen him before. 60 plate appearances versus Boyd, 25% strikeout percentage, and just a 210 expected batting average. And like I talked about, Twins, third worst batting average, second worst on base percentage, and fourth worst OPS versus lefties this season. Look, Boyd had a rough outing. He had a couple rough outings before this season normally dials it back in his last start was pretty bad so i think he's better here today we also look at when we get to the bullpens outside of boyd and gray twins six best bullpen era tigers 14th best sure there's going to be some runs at opportunities probably in this game but and while you can pivot to maybe taking the first five under there's been too many occurrences that where you take a first five under they go over in the first five and then the runs just dry up so i'd rather go the full game taking the under at eight like everyone's going to be on the twins today at minus 200 that's a free put it in your parlay set it and forget it yeah i feel like whenever the twins are in parlays their offense does not show up so i would rather fade these two offenses tw tigers on the road twins at home against a lefty give me the under eight runs in this one i think it's a pretty good look but logan you know what time it is 
It's Nerf Nation time, baby. Get the flags out. We need six quick outs in the worst way. And look, we need this one badly. If we lose two more in a row, Nerf Nation will probably go on a hiatus for a little bit of time. But look, we love doing these. We obviously were super profitable this year, This or last year. This year obviously hasn't been as good, but we're waving the flags today, and we're going to go to a game we just talked about. Tigers and Twins taking the no-run first inning, minus 115 on FanDuel. Now, yes, it's dangerous to double dip, and... I wouldn't be surprised if there's some runs early in this one, but we really like the splits here. And as for all the reasons I already talked about just a moment ago, we like the under in this game. So hopefully it starts off with, you know, no runs in the first inning. And if they score a lot of runs in the first, we might be in a world of pain. But let's obviously talk about Sonny Gray. We've talked about his splits versus Tigers offense, but we also want to talk about him in terms of the first inning. 12-1 and one on no one first innings. He's nerfed in nine straight games. Tigers, 22nd in first inning runs. They score much more, much less on the road, which is where they find themselves today. We've talked about how bad they have been recently on the road. So, look, Greg, I need a good performance out of you, especially in the first inning. Go get me three outs, and then who's on the other side, Logan? Yeah, it's Matthew Boyd, as you already talked about. Matthew Boyd, 10-2 and two on Nerfies this season. He's nerfied in five straight, which is what you'll want to see, right? He's facing this Twins offense, 15th in first inning runs, 26th in first inning runs at home, which is a bit surprising, right? If it can survive the the power at the top half of the order, you know, with the Twins and not a solo blast, right? Because we already got solo blasted yesterday. Come on, Nerfy gods. Be a little bit nicer to us today. The over-under set to 7.5 in that 8 range, as Austin did pick. So I, I do think this one stands a really good chance of cashing. Yes, it is always dangerous double dipping. But if you believe in a pick enough, then you should double down on it a little bit. Nerfy Nation, let's see if we can get one. Yeah, we desperately need this one to cash, and we need a lower scoring game that Tiger swings. Let's cash the Nerfy. It's that back-to-back -back winning days, and that broom is getting dusty over there. I need to bring it out, and hopefully today we get, or tomorrow we get to bring it out. But either way, let's have another winning day. If you want to check out that Ontario offer, it is down below in the description. If you live there, definitely sign up for points. Bet one of the better books that you guys have available to you. Let's have a great Thursday, Logan. We'll see you guys back again for Friday for some more picks. Peace.